Good morning and welcome to All Saints Church in St. Andrews on this, the third Sunday in Advent, as we continue our countdown to Christmas. Thank you for joining us for this time of worship. Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The hour cometh and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. Please join me in an opening prayer. Keep us, O Lord, while, while we, we carry, carry on, on this earth, earth in a, a serious serious seeking after, after thee, thee, and an affectionate walking with thee every, every day of our lives, that when thou comest, we may be found not hiding our talent, talent nor serving, serving the flesh, flesh nor yet asleep, asleep with our lamp unfurnished, unfurnished but waiting and longing for our Lord, our, Lord, our gracious King, King forever and ever. And ever. Amen. Amen. Dearly beloved, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace. Almighty and most merciful Father, we, we have, have erred and strayed from, from thy ways like lost sheep. sheep. We, we have, have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. hearts. We, we have, have offended, offended against thy holy laws. laws. We, we have, have left undone those things which we ought to have done. done. And we, we have done those things which we ought not to have done. And there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips. And, and our, our mouth shall show, show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, Lord make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Our King and Savior draweth nigh. O come, let us worship. We say together the Advent, O Antiphons. O wisdom of our God most high, guiding, guiding creation with power and love, come, come to teach us the path of knowledge. O leader of the house of Israel, giver of the law to Moses on Sinai, come to rescue us with your mighty power. O root of Jesse's stem, sign of God's love for all his people, come to save us without delay. O key of David, opening the gates of God's eternal kingdom, come and free the prisoners of darkness. O radiant dawn, splendor of eternal light, son of justice, Come and shine on those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death. O King of all nations and keystone of the church, come and save man whom thou formed from the dust. O Emmanuel, our King and giver of law, come to save us, Lord our God. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Barbara will now read the first lesson. The first lesson is written in the first epistle of St. Paul to the Corinthians, the fourth chapter, beginning at the first verse. 
Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not mine own self. I know nothing against myself, yet am I not hereby ju justified. But he that judgeth me is the Lord. Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the heart. And then shall every man have praise of God. Here ends the first lesson. Psalm appointed for today is Psalm 33, and we'll read responsively by the half verse. Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous. For it becometh well the just to be thankful. Praise the Lord with harp. Sing, Sing praises unto him with the lute and the instrument of ten strings. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing, Sing praises lustily with the good courage. For the word of the Lord is true. And all his works are faithful. He loveth righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made. And all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. He gathereth the waters of the sea together, as it were in a bottle. And, and layeth up the deep, as in a treasure house. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Stand in awe of him, all ye that dwell in the world. For he spake, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. The Lord bringeth the counsel of the nations to naught. And, and maketh the devices of the peoples to be of none effect. The counsel of the Lord shall endure forever. And, and the thoughts of his heart from generation to generation. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And, and blessed are the folk that he hath chosen for his own inheritance. The Lord looketh down from heaven. And beholdeth all the children of men. From the habitation of his dwelling. He considereth all them that dwell on the earth. He fashioneth all the hearts of them. And understandeth all their works. There is no king that can be saved by the multitude of an host. Neither is any mighty man delivered by such strength. A horse is counted as but a vain thing to save a man. Neither shall he deliver any man by his great strength. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him. And upon them that put their trust in his mercy. To deliver their soul from death. And to feed them in the time of dearth. Our soul hath patiently tarried for the Lord. For he is our help and our shield. For our heart shall rejoice in him because we have hoped in his holy name. O Lord, let thy mercy lighten upon us. Like, like as we do put our trust in thee. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and, and to the Holy Ghost, Ghost as, as it was in the beginning, beginning is, is now and ever shall, shall be, world, world without, without end. end. Amen. Amen. Jared reads our second lesson. The second lesson is written in the Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 11th chapter, beginning at the second verse. Now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John again those things which ye do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. And as they departed, Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, What went ye out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken in the wind? But what went ye out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in kings' houses. But what went ye out for to see? A prophet? Yea, I say unto you, and more than a prophet, for this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Here ends the second lesson. Please join me in reading the Surge Illuminare. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and, and the, the glory of the Lord, Lord is, is risen upon, upon thee. thee. For behold, the darkness, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, 
and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Thy gates shall be opened continually. They shall not be shut day nor night. The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee. And all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down to the soles of thy feet. And they shall call thee the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land, wasting nor destruction within thy borders. But thou shalt call thy walls salvation, and thy gates praise. The sun shall be no more thy light by day, neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee. But the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light, and thy God thy glory. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who Who art art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy Thy kingdom kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give Give us this day our daily bread, and and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses, as we forgive forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the King. And mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And do thy ministers with righteousness. And make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people. And bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. And evermore mightily defend us. O God, make clean our hearts within us. And take not thy Holy Spirit from us. O Lord Jesus Christ, with thy first coming, to send thy messenger to prepare thy way before thee. Grant that the ministers and stewards of thy mysteries may likewise so prepare and make ready thy way by turning the hearts of the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, that at thy second coming to judge the world, we may be found an acceptable people in thy sight, who livest and reignest with the Father and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, give us grace that we may cast away the works of darkness and put upon us the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which thy son Jesus Christ came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the quick and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit now and ever. Amen. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom. Defend us, thy humble servants, and all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O Lord, our heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, Defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance to do always that is righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Today's sermon will be delivered by the Reverend Bob Cheatley. Thank you very much, John. John the Baptist is in prison, 
and he sends two of his disciples to find out directly from Jesus if he is the expected one or if they should be looking for someone else. Did John doubt Jesus and question whether he was really the Messiah, the one all Israel was waiting for? And if so, why did John doubt? To answer that, we might be helped with some biblical and historical context. John came into his ministry in response to a 700-year-old prophecy of the prophet Isaiah. A voice cries in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. John was certain of his calling. He was the one who had been set apart from before his birth to be the forerunner of the Messiah, the anointed one of God. He lived in the desert until the time of his appearing. John came into Israel preaching and delivering a baptism of repentance. The wider community expected that Messiah would come like a warrior king to free them from the tyranny of the Romans. Instead, Jesus came on the scene as a man of words and prayers who seemed a little too status quo to be the Messiah whom they were awaiting. Think about how different John the Baptist and Jesus were. The angel Gabriel told John's father, Zechariah, that John would be filled with the Holy Spirit even before his birth, and he would come in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the people of Israel back to the Lord and to prepare their hearts to, re to receive him. That would fulfill in John the prophecy of the prophet Malachi that Elijah would come before the great day of the Lord. He was the expected forerunner of the Messiah, to be sure. John would drink no wine or strong drink. He wore a garment of camel's hair with a leather belt and he ate locusts and wild honey. John did not enter or stand in the synagogue. Instead, he appeared out in the desert where he baptized all who came with repentant hearts to be put right with God before Messiah came. John was revolutionary. He didn't come asking the permission of the Jewish religious leaders to initiate his ministry. In fact, they didn't know if he was the Messiah or just who he was. His message was, repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Of himself, he quoted the prophet Isaiah when he said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. When the Pharisees and Sadducees came, he called them a brood of vipers and asked who warned them to flee from the wrath to come. John told everyone everywhere to repent and to be ready for the coming of the Lord. And that included the mighty as well as the lowly. In his call for repentance, he publicly shamed Herod Antipas of Galilee for his sin that scandalized Europe or scandalized Israel. Herod had visited his brother in Rome. And while he was in Rome, he seduced his sister-in-law into an affair. He then divorced his wife and took his brother's wife back to Galilee and married her himself. John the Baptist was not going to let such a scandal go unmentioned. So in his public shaming, he brought disgrace upon Herod and his wife Herodias that caused John to be thrown in, into prison. When John was incarcerated, he sent his disciples to find out directly from Jesus if he was the Christ, the Messiah, or should they be looking for someone else to follow? After all, Jesus did not look exactly like the Messiah that Israel was expecting, who would sort the Romans out and free the people of Israel. Even when Jesus came to John to be baptized at the start of his ministry, John was taken aback by his coming and thought that Jesus should baptize him. After all, if he was the Holy One, why would he need to repent and be baptized? John heard the voice of God saying, you are my beloved son, with you I am well pleased. As it worked out, Jesus did not begin his ministry until John was arrested and placed in jail. Jesus went through all Galilee and Syria, teaching in synagogues and proclaiming the kingdom of heaven and healing every disease. And great fo crowds followed him from Galilee and the Decapolis, from Jerusalem and Judea and beyond the Jordan. In all these places, he taught in the synagogues like a rabbi, and he gathered disciples like a rabbi. He preached the law and the prophets 
and said that he came to fulfill those teachings. Jesus did not come to overthrow the Romans. In fact, he seemed to support their authority and told the people to pay their taxes. He even paid taxes himself when he and Peter were meant to do so. John may have looked like a wild revolution, revolutionary calling out people who were in the wrong, but Jesus looked more like the status quo of the Jewish system. When John was in prison, heard the works of Jesus, he sent his disciples to ask Jesus if he really was the Messiah. He wants his disciples to know for themselves also. Jesus responds to the disciples to tell John what they hear and see. The blind receive their sight, the lepers uh, are cleansed, the lame walk, the deaf hear, and the good news of salvation is preached to everyone, including the poor. He says, blessed is the one who takes no offense in me. Like John, Jesus raised the hackles of the Jewish leaders, but Jesus through his ministry confronted them head on. In Matthew 23, he says, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! You shut the kingdom of heaven in people's faces, for, for you neither enter yourselves nor allow those who would enter to go in. John, who was in prison and doomed to die, had given his life for the sake of the coming Messiah, and he needed to know for sure that Jesus was the actual Messiah and not just a great rabbi with a healing ministry. Like he did once before at Jesus' first appearing, John points his disciples to Jesus that they may learn from themselves and, that they, and then they could reassure John before he was executed. John pointed them to Jesus and then Jesus points them to John. In the hearing of the multitude, Jesus honors John for who he is. Jesus says John is a prophet and much more than a prophet. He is the one whom the prophet Isaiah spoke. Behold, I send my prophet before, thee, before thy face who will prepare thy way before thee. In the very next sentence after our text, Jesus says, among those born of women, there is no one greater than John the Baptist. Great as John was in service to God and Christ, John never knew the full extent of the love of Jesus. He never witnessed the greatest act of love the world has ever seen when Jesus gave his life on the cross for the salvation of the whole world. John loved Jesus Christ, the Messiah. He gave his life for the sake of Jesus and his mission. In the plan of salvation, God used John the Baptist to go before the Messiah and prepare the hearts of the people. Then Jesus came to die for our sins. In God's plan of salvation, we who believe and trust in Jesus will enter the kingdom of heaven. May, be, may this be the time that all of us will say to Jesus, I believe, come Lord Jesus. Glory be to God, amen. Watchful at all times, let us pray for strength to stand with confidence before our Maker and Redeemer, that God may bring in His kingdom with justice and mercy. Lord, in Your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray that God may establish among the nations His scepter of righteousness, inspire and guide those in places of trust and responsibility with authority over us, Charles, our King, Mary and Brenda, His representatives, and Justin, Blaine, John, Kathy, and Brad, and all who work with them for the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church and all who minister, both lay and ordained. Bless Linda, our primate, David, our archbishop, and the clergy and lay readers of our diocese and parish. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray that God may bind up the brokenhearted, restore the sick, and raise up all who have fallen and th those affected by chronic illness and communicable diseases, and those affected by natural disasters and extreme weather. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray that the light of God's coming may dawn on all who live in darkness and the shadow of death, those in places of conflict, especially the people of Ukraine and Russia, Israel and Gaza, those suffering because of famine, poverty, and homelessness, 
Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for our family, friends, and neighbors, that they may be prepared to meet our Savior in the spirit of the Christ child, and when he returns as a merciful judge. Protect all who travel for work or recreation. Let us pray for those celebrating birthdays this week, Barbie, Elaine, Aidan, Mary Janet, Wilfred, John, Vincent, and Charlie, and Jim and Cheryl celebrating their wedding anniversary. May they grow in grace as their years increase and ever live so as to please Thee. Lord, in Your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. Let us pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Andrew and St. John the Baptist, our patrons, as well as Ignatius of Antioch and St. Thomas the Apostle, whom we commemorate this week, and all the saints, giving thanks for the lives of Margaret Hawken and Quan Jackie Chan, we may shine forth as lights in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, hear our prayer and let our, our cry come to you. you. Amen. Amen. Please join me in a closing prayer. May God the Father, who loved the world so much that he sent his only Son, give us grace to prepare for eternal life. May God the Son, who comes to us as Redeemer and Judge, reveal to us the path from darkness to light. May God the Holy Spirit, by whose working the Virgin Mary received the Christ, help us bear the fruits of holiness. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto Thee, and has promised that when two or three are gathered together in Thy name, Thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of Thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of Thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. The grace Grace of our Lord Lord Jesus Jesus Christ, Christ, and the the love of God, God, and and the the fellowship fellowship of the Holy Holy Ghost Ghost be with with us all evermore. evermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us, and may you have a blessed week. May your preparations for the Feast of the Nativity of our Lord bear much fruit of holiness in your life. To request weekly transcripts of each service in advance, email allsaints at nb.aibn.com.